And uh, what we're going to do around here is get in a word and spirit flow. Somebody say amen. amen. For we're not just word only, which word will get you there. It'll help you. But you're going to need the Holy Spirit for the rhema. You're going to need the Holy Spirit to lock in on the moment, what God has for the moment. And I've been thinking about the guy, and I've thought about this guy a lot. Thank you all for coming tonight, too. Give yourself a hand for being hungry. Okay, that was weak. Give yourself a hand for being hungry. This is the largest Sunday night service we've had in a while. I don't know how many's here, but I would say he knows. Fred keeps the count for us and puts it in email, sends it over to Rebecca. But I can tell by looking at the crowd, there's an atmosphere of expectancy in this room tonight. You didn't just come here to be seen. Come on. You didn't just come here tonight because you didn't need something. You're here because you need a touch from the throne room of God. And I believe God's going to meet your need tonight. I said God's going to meet your need tonight. I would be shouting over that right now, especially if I had a need. If you had a need, you'd be shouting, right? So thank God that many of you went out of your way to be here tonight. And I am thankful because most churches don't even have a Sunday night service. I'm not knocking anybody, but I'm telling you, I believe when God hits this nation, it's going to be a night service. Why do you believe that? Because everybody else that ain't hungry, or they're at home. Only the hungry people come out at night. <laughs> I'm telling you. Folks done got their service out of the way this morning, but tonight you come back for a double dose. Many of you got up at 8 o'clock this morning. You were in this building by 8.30, and you've been here today many hours, and God's breaking out across this nation. Whether you know it or not, there's actually a move of God happening across our nation in, in some, some very, they're not huge numbers, but God's doing some amazing, amazing things right now in our nation. Actually, there are some people that are in revival right now. Now, it's just embers, and they're just getting started, but there are some folks that are seeing moves of God. Not only that, but they're seeing miracles, signs, and wonders. Amen. We went to Red River Meeting House. I don't know if we have that picture where we were at Red River. Unplug that thing for me over there. Go, what? All right, so on the bottom, put your finger on the bottom of the plug and hold it from coming out of the wall and then just pull, okay? So it's two-part. Yeah. I thought Jesus was coming or something. Hold, hold the bottom of the silver thing, and pull it out of the wall. Turn just a little to your left and pull. There you go. All right. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Well, that's the kind of plug you ought to be plugged into, one that you plug and turn. Get connected, bless God, to some real good, strong flow. Get connected to something where you don't easily disconnect. There are a lot of folks that are easy disconnect Christians, and I'm not one of those people. If I get connected, bless God, I'm going to get connected. And that kind of connection, when you push, you turn, and it's hooked up. Somebody say, I'm going to get connected. I'm not going to be pulled out easy. I'm going to get hooked up. And thank you guys for coming tonight, because I believe God has something special for you. Now, now I'm, I'm praying that you'll take hold of this next part of this session because Romans 14, 17 says this, After all, the kingdom of God is not a matter of getting the food and drink one likes. But instead, it's, it is righteousness, that state which makes a person acceptable to God. Righteousness. Somebody say righteousness. Right standing with God. That's what makes you acceptable. It's the blood of Jesus and repentance from dead works, not just sin. I said dead works. He told the church at Ephesus, he said, I want you to go back and do your first works again. 
and you've lost your first love. You're missing the ingredient that you needed when you first started. What is that? Passion, hunger, seeking, desire. That's, that's something that's coming back to this church. In this building, I can feel. I hadn't felt this expectancy like this in this building at one time in a while. You come here tonight expecting to receive something. Not only that, but I can feel your supply in the room right now. I can feel your prayers. I can feel the anointing. It's getting stronger. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We're not going to let a few doubters keep us settled down tonight. I can tell there may be a few folks that didn't come to get plugged in, really plugged in, but there are some people here tonight that said, you know what? I'm not going home like I came. I'm going to get mine tonight. Praise God. And if you don't pick yours up, I'm going to take yours home with me. Amen. So we're going to see it. We're going to see it. He said it's not just it. It's instead it's righteousness, that state which makes a person acceptable. This Amplified Bible, classic edition. He said makes a person acceptable to God, a heart, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. I want to give you something. You know why some folks, I believe, don't have real joy and real peace? They don't have the understanding of righteousness. I'm taking up offering, if you can believe it. We're not preaching yet. <laughs> Righteousness, peace, and joy. Let me help you. If you don't have the first ingredient, right standing with God, you'll never, you will never have peace or joy. But if you get a good understanding of righteousness, right standing, being acceptable to God, you can wake up in the morning and say, you know what, I don't care what in the hell comes against me or what in hell comes against me. Hell is actually not cussing. It's a location. Yeah, it's a location. So it don't matter what in hell comes against you. When you know who you are in Him and you know you are accepted in the beloved, you get your position right in Christ, you get stabilized in your identity, and you wake up and say, I am made righteous, not by what I did, no, but what He did. And greater is He that is in me than he that's in this world. So I can be happy today. I can be happy. Recognition of that will help you become happier. You can get happy. You can get happy. Joy could fill this house tonight. You could leave here. You know what would help some of you? A good double dose of joy. Well, I don't know. I want to be religious. Well, just be religious. You've been doing extremely good at it, I can tell. You should get joy. You wake up in the morning, you say, you know what, I'm made right with God. No matter what comes against me today, I got joy. Joy. Like Mama Clampett, Mama Clampett, Jed's grandma, Mama, gra Jed's gra Mama, I believe that was Jed's Mama. Miss Clement, she had her a triple X jug of joy. And she'd take her a big swig. And before you know it, she'd be running around that house singing, clapping, and praising. Tonight, if some of you'd get you a big triple X jug of the Holy Ghost and get you a big drink of the power and presence and love of God, you'd get some joy. <laughs> I need some joy. She'd go around, I got joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my If the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on a tack. Slap your neighbor a high five. Some of you got excited. And tell them I got joy. I got joy. So the recognition of righteousness, the recognition of righteousness will give you peace and joy. The law of recognition, when you don't recognize something, 
it will leave your life. If you don't, the law of recognition is this. When you recognize something, it becomes useful. But if you don't recognize it, it will leave your life. You must recognize something in order for it to get stronger. We must understand tonight the law of recognition um, uh, it needs to be important and valuable. Even in this moment tonight, you need to understand and recognize this moment. This is a moment. We've been given, we don't, I don't remember a lot of parts of my life. I remember what? Y'all catching on quick. Y'all a fast crowd. I don't remember all my life. I remember moments of my I have great moments in my life. I've got moments I forgot, but I've got great moments. And these moments I take hold of, they're what equip me. They're what keeps, keeps me. And tonight, there's a moment. That's what I was wanting to show you. Now, that's the Red River. No, that's Cane Ridge. Oh, that is Red River. Oh, yeah, it is, ain't it? Yeah, there's Pastor Fair taking a nap while I'm praying. <laughs> She's actually uh, praying. Amen. <laughs> you know, while I'm reading, I'm probably reading something the Lord's telling me. That flag and that flag are those flags that was in that house. We took, we took them with us, and they're here now. Why? Because I believe in the tangible. If you don't believe in tangible anointing, you probably should have a talk with the soldier that fell on the bones of Elisha. Just have a conversation with him. What else we got? You got anything else? There was a front bumper on a Ford, and it said Red River. You remember that? You was there. Was you not there? She was with us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you Oh, yeah, you was there. Pastor Farrell was actually drunk. She don't remember who went with us or remember even being there. Archie was there. There was an arrow that was in the tree. And the tombstone was growing out of the tree. See, the Lord told us about tapping into whales. And we're going to get on in this service in a minute. But many of you don't understand if you've never had a father in your life, you won't know where to dig. Abraham dug the wells. Isaac dug again the wells of his father. And he knew where to dig because he had the blueprint. There are some things that revivalists have laid down that the church needs to pick back up. One of them, one of them is righteousness. The other is repentance. We were, <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were preaching down in uh, uh, Georgia, and uh, I'm believing for a bass boat, and we were sitting in the Wendy's drive-thru. Uh, this is after I preached. And we were getting uh, double cheeseburgers, praise the Lord. Wendy's Frosties and Fries and drinks, and there was a bass boat pulled up beside me, and it had a 300R on it. And he said, what's the R stand for? I said, Rrr. <laughs> he laughed all the way back from Georgia. He quit laughing. Rrr. Well, that's, that's the Rrr of revival. Righteousness and repentance. That's what's going to power this thing. All right. Y'all, are you, is, it, is this okay? If we could get these two ingredients, revival would flow out of us. We'd be alive. We'd have joy. We'd have peace. We'd show up on our job. We wouldn't trying to get something. We'd have it with us. We'd show up in his righteousness, his peace, his joy with the spirit of repentance. Come on. That's what it's going to take. All right, all right. I'm not preaching yet. I'm taking up offering. Recognition. Say recognition. Write this down. There will never be a day in my life that I have nothing. 
There will never be a day in my life that I have nothing. Never. They actually surrounded, memorialized that building with another building around it. That is the original building. Yeah, that's the original building. So they, enc they enclosed that to preserve it. We walked around in there and prayed for about two hours and just prayed, just had the run of the place to ourselves. We laid hands on the walls. I got behind the pulpit and preached for a little while. It was, it was really interesting. <clears throat> it was a good time. And uh, we, we must understand there's some things that people have laid down that we're going to have to pick back up again. But not only that, there's some things we have to reach forward for. There's some things before us. Not only can we, it, we we've got to refuse to, to we, we can't forget all the things that have been left behind us, but we must reach forth to those things which are before. He said what? Forgetting those things which are behind. In other words, forgetting the, the levels, forgetting the pain, forgetting the problem, but he said don't forget the principles. All right. There will never be a day in your life that you have nothing. That widow woman in 2 Kings 4, verse 1, Now there cried, 2 Kings 4, 1, Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take him, my two sons, to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said to her, What do you want me to do for you? What shall I do for you? What do you want me to do? Tell me what do you have in your house? She said, your servant has nothing. She didn't have, she didn't, she was not down to nothing. She, she just didn't recognize what she had. The law of recognition. Somebody say it. Say it one more time. What you have in your hand right now is the answer. What you release today determines the harvest of your tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> today you're sowing something out of your life or you're giving something out of your life. It will determine your harvest of your tomorrow. She had the ability to discern. She also not only had oil, but she had the ability to discern the man of God. She recognized. Somebody say, you better recognize. Say it one more time. You better recognize. She had the ability not only to recognize the man of God, she had the ability to listen to the man of God. It's not enough just to recognize. You've got to be able to listen. And not only did she recognize and listen, she obeyed. Now, God always gives you something to begin your future. Always. God always gives you something to begin your future. If you're watching online or you're here in this house tonight, I wanted to give you this word. You are not down to nothing. And what you currently have can determine the harvest of your tomorrow. If you're willing to release it. My son was going down the road with me the other day, and he said, Dad, lay your hand out like this, and I did. He said, now just do it, lay it out flat. And he said, just lay it out flat. He said, now just, just relax. And as you relax, your hand, it just begins to kind of close up. Because naturally, we live close-handed. It's easier. This thing closes easier than it opens. It actually, you have to concentrate and think about it to keep your hand open. But if you just relax, okay. What you let out of your hand today will determine your harvest your tomorrow. Now, as you sow tonight, sow from this place. This is what I want to get. Seed or sowing is the emptying of your today to receive the harvest in your tomorrow. Seed or sowing is the emptying of your today to receive the harvest of your tomorrow. I want you to look at what you have. I want you to pray about what you have. And I want you to ask God, God, what do you want me to give?
It gets quiet right in this section. Have you ever noticed that? Say amen. amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Pastor Fair and I are leaving this week. She's going on the only uh, opportunity that she's going to have this year that we know of right now to be able to get out of this church. She's, she had to tell God no. She had to tell God yes, and she had to tell me no. She's not been out of the, this place. She didn't go to Crossville. She didn't go to Chattanooga. She didn't go to Louisville. She hadn't been anywhere with me this year. God spoke to her and, like, and me like in December. I walked through that door, and from that door to right here where she stands up here and worships, he told me, he said, Jeff, you're going to travel more this year than you ever have, and you're going to preach more places outside of here than you ever have, and it's already been happening. We're halfway through the year, and it's already happened, and it's going to continue to happen. But he said this, she won't be going with you. And I thought, well, this is going to go over like a lead balloon. I hope you talk to her. I mean, if you know, we're like inseparable. We're at the hip. Everywhere I go, she goes. Everywhere she goes, I go. There's not been a year here that we hadn't traveled together. Not been a moment that I didn't go somewhere. And uh, actually, she's been sending me places. We, we're coming up on, uh, the, we had an invitation to go to uh, Southwest Believers Convention this year. And I'm going to Texas. I'll be going later in the J July. I'll be going to Texas for uh, like 10 days. Everything's kind of took care of for my room already. Travel's already took care of. God's putting us in a room to where we can do something and make. Look, I know some of you don't understand this, but when you want to. What did I give you this morning? Proverbs. What? 1320. Is that right? Is that right? What? Well, y'all know better than I do. Put it up on the board. Whatever I gave you this morning about stupid people. Thirteen twenty. That's what I said. Don't y'all second guess me anymore. Y'all are funny. 1320 New Living Translation. Walk with the wise and what? Become wise. Pastor, why do you want to be in rooms where you're uncomfortable and where you're, they're so much further ahead in certain areas than you are? Because, listen, some of you need to understand, you need to be around somebody that knows something more than you know. You don't know everything. And if you are the smartest person in the room, you're not learning anything. Amen. Mike Murdoch said, if you're the smartest person in the room, you better leave the room because you're just going to get dumber. Think about that. I'm going to let you think about that just a minute. Think about that. You're not learning. You're comfortable. You're smart. You're way above everybody in the room. Nobody else knows what you know. And you're just going to start getting dumber. Why? Because you're hanging around with dumber people. Why you didn't go any further with your education? Why is the pressure of your, you, you felt like you didn't know nothing. You didn't listen. That's the whole reason why you were going to go to school. You didn't know. Walk with the wise, become wise, associate with fools, and get in trouble. That is not the translation that I had this morning. I had what? New, the living translation. Yeah, I like it better. You're all right. You're all right. I just kind of sprung it on you. Good news. Huh? No, the good news translation. The one I had this morning. It really clarifies the point. For me. There you go. If you make friends with stupid people. <laughs> I like that translation. It just hits different than the rest of them. If you 
Make friends with stupid people. <laughs> You'll be ruined. How many of you know? We, we don't want to be ruined. So, uh, you know, we're, we're go I'm going uh, this year, we're going to Southwest Believers, going to be in a room with some great people. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to serve. We're working the uh, prior to service. We'll be praying. We'll be setting up. We'll be tearing down. And we'll be ushering. What do ushers do? They ush. What do greeters do? They greet. What do meters do? They meet. This is easy. I can do any of these, right? So we're just going to go serve. Why? Because when you take up a position and you get too high and too lofty in your mindset, you can't grow. So I said all that to say this. Pastor Farron and I will be gone next Sunday. Now, I usually don't tell you, but I believe in you now. I used to be in a church. I thought if I tell you, they wouldn't show up. But that's not this church now. You guys aren't just here to hear me preach. You're here to bring your supply. You're not here just to consume. You're not here just to watch. You're here to grow. You're here to be a part of what God's doing. And you wouldn't miss church service for the world, I can tell. <laughs> Amen. So you be here next week. Pastor Farron and I are going to Dominion Camp Meeting. And when you sow tonight, you're helping us go. Just want to let you know. As you sow tonight, you're helping us go. So you're sending us to get refueled, refired, refreshed. Amen. She's had to be with you all the time. Get to be with you all the time. She's excited about it. We were a few few weeks ago. I was doing something, and I had a little bit of a mean streak in me. And she sent back a message that was very pastoral. And I said, "I love you." I said, "What you just said sounds just like a pastor." So thank you. Thank you, and because I need that in my life. Okay. accountable it gets quieter amen somebody amen. you'll never be a day in your life there'll never be a day when you have nothing you may be impoverished like this widow many people thought she had nothing but she had the ability the rare incredible powerful ability To discern, to listen, and to obey. Are you willing to do that tonight? Have you sought the Lord about your sowing? Have you got a seed in your hand? I believe firmly tonight there will be some people in this room sow a significant seed to help us go. Amen. And to help this ministry. So pray. Ask the Lord, Lord, what would you have me to sow tonight? Amen. Y'all are loud. Y'all are really loud right now. It's almost unbearable up here. Ask the Lord again. Lord, what would you have me to sow? Ask him, Lord, what would you have me to sow? To bless this man and woman of God and to help this ministry. In Jesus' name. If you're online, you can help. We appreciate you so much. We got many people. We got tithers that actually have never been to this church that watch online, and we're thankful for you. Now, I wish you could get here, but we're thankful to get the opportunity to help you from where you are. Amen? And if you are a faithful tither and you can't travel and you are away from us, I want to send you a 3 2, one Revival shirt where you can watch it on Revival Nights. Amen? So you let me know, whoever's out there that's watching online, as you sow tonight, I want to put one of these shirts in your hand. And if you don't have one, I told everybody today and today only, they're $10 a piece. Now, Wyatt was trying to work me out there in the foyer a while ago. He hollered back and said, is only the 3 2, one Revivals 10 or the other ones? I said only the three, two, one revival ones. Amen. I appreciate him for trying, though. I'm going to give him an E for effort.
Father, we love you. We thank you for the seed that we're about to receive, and we thank you that everybody here recognizes the man of God, recognizes and discerns, and they have listened to the man of God. And, Lord, I thank you that they have the ability to obey the man of God. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Pass those buckets, men. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good to see you tonight. Good to see every one of you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I'm not known for putting people on the spot. <laughs> hey, uh, Kimberly, do you know that song, Come Running to the Mercy Seat? How long has it been since you played it? A long time. How many? Many years. Well, many, 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 many. I just wondered how long it's been. Do you know the song, William? Do you know how to play it? Do you know how to play it? No. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. We thank you for the flow. We thank you for the supernatural flow of your presence and your power. God, we believe you for a greater flow. Lord, we believe you for greater miracles, signs, and wonders tonight. Lord, we believe you for healing. We believe your word. We stand upon your word tonight, and we say yes to your word, and we say yes to your will. We say yes to your presence and your power, and we believe you to do miracles, signs, and wonders in our midst tonight. In every area of our life, Lord, we believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. If the anointing hits you, you just come on up here. If it don't, that's fine. Radical. Somebody say radical. Somebody say radical. Let me read you something uh, about the word radical, the root foundation of something. The word radical means the root or foundation of something. In other words, it is the basis upon which other things are supported. Radical, especially of change or action relating to or affecting the fundamental nature of something, far-reaching or thorough. Radical. Say it again, say radical. Authentic faith seems to be radical. I said authentic faith seems to be radical. Radical faith. Acts chapter number 5, verse number 12 through, yeah, maybe 19. But we'll start in 12, Acts 5. Radical does not mean irrational or even mystical. It means getting at the root or source of something. You can be radical when you get to the source of something, the root. At the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were taking place among the people, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. At the hands of the apostles, 
many signs and wonders. It takes more faith to believe God stopped doing something than he did do something. All right, I'm going to say that over here. I said it takes more faith to believe God stopped doing something than it does to, to, to believe that God is, well, I said it backwards. It takes more faith to believe that God can stop doing something than God ever did something. God didn't stop. Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, this is where you say amen. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is unchanging. If God ever healed one person, he can heal you. If God saved one person, he can save you. If God ever made one person that was blind be able to see, if he ever touched one person's ears, if he ever healed one person's heart, he can heal you. He's not lost, he's not lost any power today. Somebody say amen. The, the, the crazy thing about some folks, we believe that you have to be really radical are really, really outside the, the realm of revelation, but really it's just getting to the source of something. When you're radical about something, you're getting to the source of something. In the upper room, they went into the upper room and they prayed. Over 500 were invited, 120 showed up. Really all you need to become radical is an invitation. You, you're invited into a... A relationship with a holy God, amen, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, where we can get engaged with the Holy Scriptures, with a holy Savior named Jesus, and we can be impacted, not only impacted, but we can become impactful. When they were in that upper room, they got into a place where they were invited into a relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. When they walked out of that upper room, they walked out of there full of joy, full of power, and the coward of, of Calvary become the preacher at Pentecost. Peter didn't have the faith to not deny Jesus, but, and he didn't have the faith to talk about it. He was denying him. He was hiding, and he didn't want to be seen. Matter of fact, he went back fishing. He told everybody else he was going to go fishing, but he decided he was going to take one more 10-day trip up into a room and see what could happen. And up in that room, he was filled and set on fire with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And some of you look like you need a refreshing and a refilling. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I know something about Baptist denomination, not, not knocking the Baptists. I got saved in the Baptist church, but after I got saved once, they thought that was good enough, and I really needed it again a few times in my life. All right, I can't get nobody to say much there. One dose just wasn't near enough for me. I needed one more dose and one more dose. And I want to tell you tonight, one encounter with the Holy Spirit is not going to be enough. You can quench Him. You can grieve Him. You can hold Him back and you can push Him out. But He's inviting you to more tonight. And you can get full. Matter of fact, you can get skunk, drunk, possessed with the power of the Holy Ghost where your flesh is no longer in control, where you can't sit there on your hands with your arms, well, you can't sit there on your hands with your arms folded, where you can't sit in your pew with your arms folded. Well, see if he can make me do something. Look, I can't make you do nothing. I told you the story about the old boy I did make do something. He said, whatever it takes, Pastor, to get me to church, that's what I want you to do. I said, are you sure? He said, absolutely, whatever it takes, Pastor. I said, okay, shake on it. We shook. I said, I'm telling you, you better keep yourself in church. I done give my word. His wife comes in church carrying a baby one Sunday morning for Sunday school, back when we still had time to learn. Back when we can still come an hour and a half earlier than what we come now and go to a classroom with trusted teachers. 
where people could commit to something other than themselves and the softball league they're a part of. Or the little league team. Or the dance team. It's getting louder as we go along. It is revival night. What did you come to see? Somebody being nice? What was I telling? What was I telling? Oh, yeah. His wife come walking in the door. She sat down crying. <laughs> I said, what's wrong with you? Hopeful. <laughs> Expectation was high. Oh, he's drunk. He went out drunk all night. I said, give me your keys. She said, what for? I said, give me your keys to your house. He passed out in the bed. Yep. Great. Give me the keys. <laughs> Got the keys to the house. Walked up to the door. Went into the bathroom, turned on the bathtub, cold water. Filled that tub up just about where it would run out. Walked into the bedroom. He's laid in there in his underwear, face down, passed out. I grabbed a head of hair and a set of underwear and picked him up. Carried him into the bathroom, squealing and squirming. Pitched him over in the water and pushed him under and baptized him afresh. He come up out of that water. <gasps> Let me up. Nope, not yet. Get back under there. Come back out of that water. Said, what are you doing? I said, I've got your clothes laid out in here. When you get dried off, get your clothes put on. We're going to church. I preached that morning all morning long. That is a true story. But it is not what you need. You don't need me to come over to your house drag you out. Come on. You don't need me to drag you. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what you need. You need a fresh indwelling empowering of the Holy Ghost to set you on fire. I wish somebody would fire me up. That's what the Holy Ghost is for. I wish preacher would preach something to fire me up. Well, you don't need me to fire you up. You just need to be full. If you'd come in here full, I, I could help you a little more. You come in here on empty, I'll send you out on an eighth of a tank maybe. You're going to retain about 15 minutes of this message, maybe, and I've already been preaching for 20 and hadn't even got to the point that I want to get to. What's that? I want to pray for you. Pastor Farron, I want to lay hands on you. Timothy said, I'm going to stir up the gift that's within you. Can I read the rest of that scripture in Acts 5? And Pastor Farron is going to join me up here. Uh, can, can you put that up in the AMPC? For the sake of just I like the way it's worded. Yes, Lord. Now, did y'all hear that thunder? I was just answering God. Yes, Lord. Now, by the hands of the apostles, special messengers, numerous and startling signs and wonders were being performed among the people. And by common consent, they all met together at the temple in the covered porch walk called Solomon's. And none of those who were not of their number dared to join. That'll make you think twice, won't it? I'm not going to preach that, but boy, I want to. The church is mixed so much with the world that the world doesn't care to sit in the church. Right. 
The church has become so worldly and the world has become so churchy, I heard one man say, that we can't tell the difference. Everybody in the world saved, right? You're going to heaven. You ask anybody. Are you a Christian? Sure. Or unless it's obvious they're a devil. and that, that, Devils don't make it obvious. Just people that want attention. You'll get that on your way home. Devils, when they so show up in front of someone who's filled with the Holy Ghost, who operate in the power of the name of Jesus, ask to leave. They don't ask to stay. People that want attention have conversation with devils. Okay. I said people that want attention have conversation with devils. You're still not getting what I'm saying. Preachers that want attention have conversation with devils. Preachers that have power cast devils out. Deliverance happens when you say his name empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're not trying to get you delivered. I don't have to get you up here. What's your name, devil? Where are you from, devil? What's your address, devil? How'd you get here, devil? That, none of those things matter. Go in the name of Jesus. Don't come back. This person's about to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And when you come back with seven more wicked, there's not going to be room. This person's going to be furnished. When you show back up, there's not going to be a seat for you. There's going to be a no vacancy sign on their forehead. You can't enter in because now they have the mind of Christ. They've received Him as their Savior. And they've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But the people held them in high regard. We preach every line. They wouldn't join with them, wouldn't associate with them. But still the world held the church in high regard. Why? Because they walked in power. They showed up for Sunday night. Excited. They didn't have to be coached, primed, pumped, or exhorted. They just came with great expectation. And praised and made much of them more and more there were being added to the Lord those who believed, those who acknowledged Jesus as their Savior and devoted themselves to him, joined and gathered with him. Crowds, both of men and of women. Christ and his church is attractive. This, I'm going to just say it till we get it here at this church. This room is attractive. People are looking for what's in this room, but until we get it to leave this room and let them see what we have in this room in our life, they're not going to be attracted to what's in this room. You know how people are going to come to this church because they're going to become attracted to you. You are a carrier of the virus. You're infected with joy. You're filled with the Holy Ghost. You're walking in peace and you're not moved by the things of this world. You're moved by the things of the kingdom. You're not living from earth to heaven. You're living from heaven to earth. Somebody say amen. amen. We must become passionate, possessed people filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about filled, on fire, flames on our head, with a new tongue, with a language that everybody can understand. They got filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak a language that everybody could understand. Everybody could understand. What does that mean? That means there is no barriers in the kingdom of heaven. We have the ability to reach into other worlds, other nations, other people groups who don't even understand the language of the kingdom, but give them a language that they can understand. What is the language? It's the language of love. It's the language of peace. It's the language of joy. Y'all ain't going to say much. 
feel like my head's about to pop off my shoulders. Fire set on each of them. Everybody in the room got a dose of the person of the Holy Spirit. It wasn't just the preacher. It wasn't just the pastor. It wasn't just the elders. Everybody in the room, from the back of the room to the front of the room, everybody in the room got empowered with the Holy Ghost. I don't know about you, but I want to see it to where everybody gets it, where you go home. I can remember sitting in Jeff Scruggs and Tracy Scruggs' house. My son was here. He said, Dad, I remember being in that house. All I can remember as a boy is that y'all were in the other room. You were running around the room. There was a bunch of crying. There was a bunch of laughing. There was a bunch of singing. There was a bunch of praising. Then y'all was rolling around on the floor, floor, praising God and shouting in the Holy Ghost. When's the last time somebody come over at your house and didn't just eat barbecue? Come on, when's the last time somebody got in your presence and got filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. They fed me the best chicken I ever had in my life. The best chicken I ever had. My mama was a white woman if you can imagine that. She was. My daddy was too. And this couple, Jeff and Tracy Scruggs, pastored a church. They were African American folks. They were wonderful people. I love them dearly. I still think of them often. I know they're in heaven cheering me on because I'm a part of their legacy. I'm a part of what they left behind. And I went hunting with their daddy, Kaji, uh, what, uh, Preacher Scruggs. What was it? Kaji. Ka Kaji Scruggs. Kaji Scruggs. And, and that's why we called him Preacher Scruggs because nobody called him Kaji. But anyway, Preacher Scruggs. He, and we went rabbit hunting. And uh, when I was a boy, we didn't have dogs, but they had dogs. We kicked brush, we walked railroad tracks, we kicked briar patches. That's how we killed rabbits. But they had dogs, long-legged, tall beagles. And they turned them dogs loose, and we were walking down the creek bank. And he said, boy, let me ask you a question. I said, yes, sir. Sir, something you say to men that are older than you. I said, yes, sir. I said, yes, sir. He said, you feel with the Holy Ghost? I said, no, sir. He said, you see that creek right there? I said, yes, sir. He said, if you walk close enough, long enough to that creek, sooner or later, you're going to fall in. If you keep, keep hanging around my family, you're going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. You're going to change denomination. He said, if you don't want to see something greater than what you got, he said, I wouldn't come back rabbit hunting with us. But if you're looking for something greater than what you've ever had, if you're looking for something that you ain't never seen before, he said, keep coming and going hunting. Matter of fact, come over to our house and eat chicken. Chicken perked my ears right up. Yes, Lord. Baptist church, we've been killing chickens. We don't want nobody to tell on us. And them chickens, they ratted out Peter, and we've been trying to silence them ever since. Peter, Peter said, man, that, that cock crowed and told on me, and all the Baptists said, we're going to kill them all, and we're going to eat them all. We're going to silence them tattletale squilling chickens. <laughs> and I went over to Jeff and Tracy Scruggs, and they fed me chicken like I had never had before. Man, my spirit was open after that meal. And he said, Jeff, do you want to receive the Holy Ghost? I said, yes, sir, I do. <laughs> we prayed in that living room that day. Power God hit my life. And I've never been able to forget that moment. And if you've never had a moment like that, you need it. And then you need it again. And again. And that day, my life was forever changed. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm almost done reading, and Pastor Fair is going to come up. 
more and more were being added to the Lord, those who believed, those who acknowledged Jesus as their Savior, and those who devoted themselves to Him. See, I don't know if we read all the Scripture or not. See, it's not enough just to pray, not enough just to believe, not enough just to acknowledge. You need to devote yourself to Him. Amen. Thank you. To Him. Join together with Him. Crowds, both men and women, so, so that even they can't. Listen to this, how it works. See, when you really get it, watch this. You will carry people to this place. They even kept carrying out the sick into the streets and placing them on couches and sleeping pads in the hope with great expectation, come on somebody, that as Peter passed by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. And pe people gathered also from towns and hamlets, which is small communities, <laughs> not hammocks, hamlets, it's different. And it wasn't the play. <laughs> But and around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those troubled with foul spirits, and they were all cured. Somebody say they were all cured. Say it again. Say they were all cured. How'd they get cured? They got carried. They got cured because they got carried. Come here, young lady. Can I use you as an example? Are you sure? Is this okay? You got on a dress. I don't know. Come here. Are the shorts on there? This is how they got healed. They got carried along. They got carried to a room where the power was tangible. Ask you a question. Are you willing to put forth some effort? Sit right there. Go ahead. Thank you. You can go sit by that. Whew, I can't preach like that long. We have to get some littler babies in here. <laughs> Somebody say carried. carried. They carried people to the church. Look, let me ask you a question. Is there anybody in your life that you're around that needs what you say you have? Have they seen it enough in your life where they'd say, you know what? I see God working in your life. I see the power of God working in your life. I see you've been healed. I see you've been delivered. I see you've been set free. Man, why don't you carry me? I don't know about you in Tennessee. We're always carrying somebody somewhere. Carry me over. Carry me over here. Carry me over there. I don't know about you, but in the book of Acts chapter 5, the Bible said they carried people. Carried them, laid them in a place where they could get healed. Tonight, you're here because we carried something that allowed you to be carried here to be healed. Amen. Pastor Farrah, would you come? up here with me and just do whatever you feel led in your spirit to do. She may need this back. That's close. Shopa kete yondo sapra banda se. Exactly. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Glory to his name. Glory to his name. That name above all names. If it's got a name, it's got a bow. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, before before we start doing doing that, because that's something that that I believe in is the power of your praise. Because when you're praising Him, 
You welcome in his presence. He inhabits the praises of his people. So therefore, if he's inhabiting your praise, then all that is in him and who, who he is, is there. It's, his healing is present. His blessings are present. Yes, Everything that you need pertaining to life and godliness is present in your praise. It's so simple. We make it so complicated. <laughs> But first, I want to speak on something, uh, something dear to my heart, something he just was talking about, and that's your supply. The importance of supply and the importance of being present in order to bring your supply. Well. Right? Um there's different parts to your arm. And first of all, is, is there anybody here who's having extremely bad pain in their right elbow? Could be online. If that's you, just let us know. And we'll pray for it here uh, soon. Um, huh? Your brother. Been having pain in his arm. Yeah. It's what it feels like. It's like it's inside. I don't have issues, so it's not mine. <laughs> it don't belong to me. It definitely See, belongs to somebody. That, there's a flow that, that is in our family, our home, and I, I've carried it, and it's crossed over into Pastor Farah's life. When we, when we get in the anointing, we'll begin to sense stuff in our body. Mm -hmm. There'll be things show up in our body, like blurred vision or, or high blood pressure. There'll be heartbeat palpitations. There'll be pain in my side, pain in my leg, pain in my hip. Those things will start happening, and I'll pray, and it'll lift. Yep. And that's what she's talking about, just so you know. So if you're watching online or if you're in the room and you've been having some problems with your right elbow, mm -hmm. you need to make sure and comment because there is a healing for that right yep. now. Yeah, that's right. That's it. Absolutely. So your supply, speaking of elbow joints, uh, your supply, the importance of, of what we do, uh, bringing our supply when we get up here and, and we minister to you, right? And that, and that is helping your supply. That's, that's feeding you, right? But uh, come, here, come here, Linda. They're distracted. Uh, so say this, this, say this right here, the elbow, say this is, this is me, right? But if the elbow, if the, if the shoulder joint, the rotator cuff, whatever you want to call it, uh, I'm not a, I'm not a doctor, so. That works <laughs> the shoulder, we'll call it the shoulder. If the shoulder it's not in place, right? First of all, you're going to have some pain. And it's going to radiate. And it's going to affect every other joint if it's out of place. Dislocated, right? Uh, but if it's not doing its supply, it can't feed the joint at the elbow, what it needs. And so when that joint at the elbow is not being fed what it needs, then moving on down to the wrist, then now the wrist is not getting anything because the joint's not getting it because the shoulder's out of place. Right? I don't care how attached her head is or how straight it is on her shoulders. When it got down to the shoulder and the shoulder dislocated, it's not in place. It's not your butt's not in the seat. It's not supplying. You're not bringing your supply to the church. You're not bringing your expectation to the church. You're not bringing your prayers to the church. You're not praying for the leadership. You're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You are affecting every other joint that is connected to you yeah. what joint is that turn to your right turn to your right turn to your left 
That's who's connected to you. That's who's connected to you, right? Thank you, Miss Linda. You're a wonderful example. The body of Christ is the whole body. It, it requires everybody coming together in order for the body to move and do what it's supposed to do without hindrance, without pain, right? So uh, healing to the body, healing to the body, uh, some out-of-place parts. There's some out-of-place parts in here tonight. There's some out-of-place parts online tonight. You're not bringing your supply. You're not bringing your supply. And you know, I don't have to call you out. I don't have to tell you what you're doing wrong. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is here, and he is a convictor of truth. He will show you, and he will tell you. Most of you are seasoned enough to know when you're not doing what you're not what you're supposed to be doing, what the Lord is having telling you to do, you're not doing it. That will cause issues in the body, in your physical body. Why? Because you're being disobedient. Disobedience will bring sickness to your body. Okay? I am not saying that that is the cause of what's going on inside of you. That is not what I'm saying. I'm saying it can be. You always want to check with yourself first. Do I have any unforgiveness in me? Do I have, am I harboring any resentment towards anybody? Because right now is that time to deal with that. And you will actually find things releasing from your body. Those things that were, were bothering you before, they will go away. You'll wake up the next day, and you'll be going about in your day, and you're like, hey, I ain't even feeling that no more. This is great, right? So I, I just wanted to say that before we get started, because I need for you to check your heart first before we start uh, laying hands on people, uh, and you know, okay, you know, just make it right with the Lord, Okay, forgive that person. Let it go. And if you're out of joint, if you're out of if you're out of the will of God, if you're being in dis, if you're in disobedience, the simple way to make that work is repent. Just repent. Repent to the Lord and move forward. And tell him, "Lord, I will not be disobedient to you anymore. Please forgive me." It's simple. He, he's a simple God. He made it simple. One thing he asked of in the Old Testament of everybody, one thing he would ask of them. And they would over and over and over and over again do the thing that he said, don't do. Don't put other idols before me. And it's still the same in the New Testament. Amen. Okay? That does not, that doesn't, the, the Old Testament, just because Jesus came, he's still saying the number one thing, if you put this before me, it's an idol. Yeah. Period. So apparently the Lord wants to talk about idols. What's an idol? Anything in your life that you put before the Lord. It could be your phone. It could be social media. Who do you give your first to in the morning? Do you open up your social media? Do you pick your phone up and immediately start checking Facebook when you wake up in the morning? I'm not here to condemn you. I'm saying the Lord is speaking here tonight. And he is saying... I need for your idols to be brought down. I need for them to be placed outside and burnt. They need to go. They need to go. 
Put me first in your life, and you will find your health improve. You will find your finances improve. You will find your relationships improve. You will find that every area of your life to improve. Hallelujah. 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 Who wants improvement in their life? I do. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. So healing comes through function. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, when you begin to function in what you're called to do, you, if you're dislocated from your purpose or your destiny or God's plan for your life, you, you really, when you're dislocated, it doesn't move. And then, then it becomes dead and then other things begin to die that's connected to it. But in your function, you, be, you become healed. I've said many times for years, I've said, you know, if you're having a bad day, go take a shower. It's a great start. Go take a shower. Put on deodorant, put on some cologne, brush your teeth, comb your hair, get in your car, go down the road and help somebody. Why? Because as you help, you'll heal. Yeah, uh, Dodie Osteen, she, she yes, did that. Tell, now, tell a story. When she first got her diagnosis, they give her four weeks, I believe. Does anybody know? Two weeks? They give her two weeks, y'all. Okay, and uh, she had whatever cancer it was, it was terminal. It was terminal. Like, you, there's nothing we can do. Go right. home, right. say goodbye to everybody, she's still get alive. your affairs in order. And, she's still and alive. so she went home and she got in the bed. Because how many of you know you get, a, you, get a, you get a diagnosis like that and it just kind of probably overwhelming, right? Sure. And so she went home and got in the bed. And John Osteen came in there and he said, Dodie. Are you going to keep laying there? Are you going to get up and let's do something? Are we going to do something about it? And she said, I'm going to get up and do something about it. She got up? She got up. They went and they ministered and they ministered and they ministered. And she spoke that word and she spoke that word and she walked it out through healing other people by praying for other people. And she was healed miraculously. And, that, and she's 90-something years old now. She's still, she's still alive. And that was 50, 60 years ago. John Osteen was a know. powerhouse, too. He was a pastor of pastors. Yeah. He was a man of God. And I'm, uh, I, we, we've got some connections with, uh, with somebody that knows uh, Miss Dodie, and she's an amazing lady still today, powerhouse of a woman. Now, uh, you know, as you go, as they went, what does it say? As they went, they were healed. Mm-hmm. And there's something, there's something about, I believe tonight, I, I believe the call is for this body. I was just trying to, trying to hear, besides the elbow, trying to hear. If you're here for healing and you need healing in your body tonight, first of all, let's start there. If you came here with great expectation and you're asking God to heal your body, let's just, let, you stand up where you are, you need to be healed. Stand up right where you are because we're going to get healing in the body tonight. Stand up where you are. You don't have to come here. Stand up where you are. The body. The body. Somebody say the body. body. Now watch this. I've seen this before, and I believe it's for tonight. Now, if you're next to someone that's standing and you have faith, you say, well, hold on now. Do I have faith? Yes. You got faith. How do you know? God give every person a measure of faith. If you call yourself a believer, if you're a born-again Christian, right, spirit-filled, you have faith right there where you are right now. You can lay hands on someone, lay hands on someone right there beside you, lay hands on someone right there beside you. If you need healing, lay hands on them. If they need healing, lay hands on them. Lay hands on them like this. Lay hands on somebody standing. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Pray in Hallelujah. the Spirit. Yeah, Say this with me. We decree as the body of Christ, healing flows through me now. Healing flows through me now. The divine DNA of heaven's throne, God's healing power released through the Holy Spirit flows through me now. The gift of healing is in me now and flows through my hands in the name of Jesus. From the head, which is Christ, flows to this person. 
that I'm laying hands on Thank you, be healed Thank you, Lord. in Jesus' Thank name. You, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank All you, right. Father. Just say, I receive, I receive my healing. Thank you, Levamando sikete anda rabanda soto rorobande se. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Romando sikete amanda sa. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Rebeke shila la mando sopre bebeke shiva mando soto roroma. Lefrabando sopre bebeke yando rorobande se. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, for your healing power. Thank you, Lord, for your healing power. The body has the power in itself to heal. We thank you, Lord, that this body carries an anointing. This body of believers carries the presence and power of God. Hallelujah. It's not about a man. It's about a body. It's about Jesus Christ and his body and his love for the body. He loves the body. He loves the church. He gave himself for it. This body is healed. This body is whole. This body is vibrant, healthy, doing good. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, this is what I want to lay hands on people for. And I want, I want uh, two people that I asked to come pray with us tonight. I want them to come as well and stand to our right and left. Shopremando sikete. Mando shopremandese. God's healing you right now. Now, here, here's, here's the call tonight. This is the altar call. If you are disconnected at any level from the body of Christ, your role, you're not clear on your purpose, you're not clear on your calling, you're not clear on where you fit into the body, you just know you want to be connected. I want to lay hands on you and stir up the gift that is in you. Amen. Now, now look, things stop the flow. Things stop the flow. People, hurt, pain, otherwise things stop the flow. Disconnection. If you don't feel a real connection to the body of Christ, and it's your time to connect even greater. What did I say at the beginning? I said, put that in and twist it. Twist twist it that was that was a physical prophetic movement in the natural realm of what this church service represented I, I'm, I, I, as soon as I seen it and look the effort that it took to get that thing to disconnect I've done it before that's why I said hold it somebody have you have problems with your shoulder well come on up here for healing power in Jesus name are you having problems with your shoulder too Mary no? Okay. All right. I seen him back there moving that shoulder, and I'm going to see that thing healed. Right here. Right here. Lift up both hands. In the name of Jesus, fire be healed. Receive. Receive. Lay hands, Pastor Fair. Shoprama, fire right there on that shoulder. Be made whole in Jesus' name. All right, now here, here's what I was going to say. If you're disconnected from the body, if you don't have a passion for your place, Hear me, a passion for your place. Look, the elbow is not upset at the eyeball. It's excited for the eyeball. It wants the eyeball to work. Why? Because if the eyeball don't work, the elbow runs into stuff it don't need to run into. No matter how ugly my big right toe is, it is very needed. And it's a big, ugly right toe, a big, ugly left toe. It looks like a copperhead that's been hit by a hammer. Hammer toes. It, it's military. It, it, it spent some time in jungle boots. It was mistreated, rode hard, put up wet, 
treated wrong. Yeah, it, was, it took years for my faith to quit pilling. Seriously. Rotten. They were rotten. They, they're good, much better now. Praise God, ain't they, baby? Come on, Jesus. <sighs> Disconnected from the body. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so tell us what's going on with that foot. She fractured it, but now they're healed. You couldn't even walk. Look at you. <laughs> Hallelujah. God healed you. That's the look of a healed person. If that was your You know, tongue, if you'll shout for somebody else's miracle, on, you might somebody. get yours. <laughs> Praise his name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Turn her mic just a little bit down. Show Patekesha. Mando so ebendese. She just got her miracle. Are you getting your miracle right there where you're standing at right now? Huh? It's coming in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for miracle working power in his life. Father, we believe you. We stand upon your word. Father, in the name of Jesus, this functioning body of believers, we stretch our hand toward this man of God, and we say, nothing missing, nothing broken, every bit made whole, strengthen his legs, strengthen his body, strengthen his mind, strengthen his heart in the name of Jesus, no symptoms left over, no, no residue of stroke, no residue of issues, Father, be made whole in Jesus mighty name. Come on, shout like you believe God can do it. Hallelujah. Disconnected from the body. I'm going to say it. I want you to come up here for prayer. We're going to pray for you right here in the line. I want you to line up. Now your calling, your destiny, your purpose. God said you've been here. Power's been flowing. But he said you've never twisted You've never twisted that lock. That's a lock-in. That's a, that's a lock-in. And if that's you, because you don't want to miss out on the flow, I want you to come up here right now. Hurry. Locking in. Line them up. Lo I'm locking into this house. I'm locking into this role. I'm locking into this purpose. I'm locking into this destiny. I don't want to miss out on what God has for me, and I don't want someone to miss out on what God has for them. You could be the very one that sets your family free. The flow. Somebody say the flow. Hallelujah. We believe you, Lord, for the flow to be greater. Come on, I'm locking in. I am locking in. I'm not going to miss out. Come on, folks are still coming. Come on, it's okay. Look, I want everybody to listen now. I want everybody to listen to me. We're going to all pray for you. We're going to pray for you. We're going to walk down these roads and pray. I need you to lock in with us. I need you to lock in in your spirit. Just come with great expectation in this moment. The color in your foot's already, look at your foot, the, the blueness is already leaving. I'm telling y'all, a minute ago when she come up here, her fur, her, her fur was brew. 
I'm serious. The color is back in her foot. No, I mean like within five minutes the blueness has gone out of her foot. The color. Praise God. Some, look, we celebrate. Some of you are getting your healing right now too. This is what we're going to begin to see. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Did, you, could anybody, did anybody see her foot a minute ago? Was it blue? It ain't blue. I'm going to pray for you first. Connect to the body. Connect to the body. Fire! We speak to the spirit. We speak to you now. A stronger connection. A stronger connection. A stronger connection. A stronger, stronger Stronger flow goes into his life from the body. From the body. Oh, 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 oh. there you go. Joy, peace, peace, peace like a river. Peace like a river. Come on in there. Come on in. Y'all pray. Come <laughs> Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. There you go. Fire. Sha ha ha. Hallelujah. God, if you can heal a broken foot and change the color back right, you can heal this man standing right here, right now. Sabano kobrebe. Ha ha I remember somebody said, if you can, ask him, if you can, would you? And Jesus said, I can, and I will. <laughs> I can, and I will heal. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Let's just move down here and get these. Who came for prayer here to connect stronger? Shambandoso. <laughs> Woo! Stronger connection. It's going to take you from 120 to what? Is it 280? What is it? 220? Voltage? 120? 240? That back there is 240. That's a 240 outlet. God's going to take you from 120 flow to 240 flow. You're going to get three-phase power today. Huh? Mando rebe ta ta shapa. Mope ke ramando ho. Ha ha. She bebe ke rondo so pata. We declare Mata. <laughs> Say, I'm connected. 240 power. <laughs> I got a jolt in my system tonight. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. We'll run a half a lap today and run a full lap next Sunday, praise God. We'll start now and do a half. Next week we'll do two-thirds. The next week we'll do a full lap. We're going to progress. We're going to walk. We're going to walk further. Come on. Fire of God. Right here. All four at once. We're just going to lay hands. Shabbat Mandosa. Tap on Golden Day. Say, you're all right, right there. Lift up your hands. Come here. Come here. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. 240. Ha! Shh. <laughs> turn. God said, turn that power. Turn that power. Shababako. Rebe. Shababando Sata. The fire of God. The fire connects stronger. 
Greater, there you go, receive, receive. <laughs> great joy. <laughs> great joy. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, hey, hey. Woo! Great joy. Man, a shock to the system. Shocking. Shocking. Is it 240 will throw you, right? 120 will hold you. Two, 240 will throw you. Turn you. 220. 110 will let you go. Oh, this one, you're about to get something to hold you. Lift up your hand. Mando Sata. Oh, God said connect stronger. This body's healed. God said your purpose, your passion, your flow is going to come back to you. You're going to connect at a greater level. You're going to connect to purpose. The Lord said today, connect to purpose. I hear the Lord saying it's never about people. It's always about purpose. Never about people. It's always about purpose. God has a purpose for you. A purpose for you. Yes. There's things that you can do here in this body. God said the commitment level is going to go up. You're going to begin to do things in this house. There's going to be a new flow coming into your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. We're not going to disconnect. We're going to connect. Lift up your hand. Fire of God. There you go. Whoa. Ha. There you go. Fire of God. There you go. Ha. Connection. Stronger. Stronger. Ha. Stronger. Ha. Strong. Ha. 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 There you go. Fire! Fire! Now, now today, today you're connecting. You, you, uh, did you just make a commitment to the Lord right back there? What happened back there just a minute ago? Praying for healing. God's going to touch you right now. Right now in Jesus in Jesus mighty name fire there you go there you go it goes in you now right now the fire there you go be healed there it is right there it is right there it is oh there it is 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 God's healing you. God's healing you right there. Right there. My God. He did a work in her. Just the, just the Lord would say, turn that, connect and turn. That way it don't come out. Don't disconnect easy. Don't pull away easy. It's locked in. Commitment. When you lock in, you commit to something greater than yourself. And it's not about what you get from it. It's what you receive and then what you have supplied to you so you can run just like that machine. That machine connects, but then after it connects, it can do its work. You have a work. You have a work. God said connect so that will begin to flow. In the name of Jesus. There you go. say. <laughs> She got healed. It's the first time she hadn't hurt. First time she hadn't hurt in two weeks. We ain't going to pass you by. We're going to pray for you. We're just testifying. We're building faith as we go down this line. This is what revival looks like. See, the body's got to get revived so it can be used. We keep praying for revival. God said, you need a body of revived people so revival can flow. Healing can flow. We get the church revived. 
So what happened? I do. It's obvious who this is. This is a spirit-filled church, first of all, and my vision works. The only difference between you two is she's got pink hair. And she's younger. Give God a praise. She's got to work. This connection becomes stronger, the Lord would say. Lift up your hand, say, I receive. Lay hands on her, Pastor. Fa There you go. Turn. Turn. Ha. Shababako. Orebese. Purpose. Passion. Power. Supply. 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 There you go. There you go. Out of your mind. In your spirit. Get in your spirit. In your spirit. Ah, Romando Sata. Ah, many, many things, many things, many things, many things, many things. I'm Pastor Fair to get over here. We're, we're, we got time for this? That's the nicest looking, no bruised foot that I've seen during service. That thing don't have no bruise, no, it's not even hardly yellow left on her foot. That is amazing. Thank you, Lord. I know. Amen. Jesus' name. You know, the, 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 the Lord has really peeled off layer after layer after layer after layer, but you're coming into purpose, you're coming into plan, you're coming into destiny. God's going to use you at a greater level. He's going to open up greater things to you. Even in this house, the Lord would say that I'm calling you to higher places. You're going to begin to see that in your life as you connect. The Lord said he moved out of you that thing that would make you want to pull away because now you actually are pulling in. Yeah, you, are, you really are. And, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I wouldn't stand here and lie to nobody. I'll tell you the truth. When you first got here, I thought, I don't know. I don't know if he's going to be able to bypass the last. But the Lord said, now you've moved past the last. <laughs> and now you're moving into the next. In the name of Jesus, lay hands up. Thank you, Lord. Fire of God. Fire of God. Fire of God. Be on him now, Lord. In Jesus' name, purpose, passion, and power. In Jesus' name. God says you're in the right place. Ah. You're here. You're here to restore, but not restore to what you were, but to higher, Shop. to greater, to more, to real purpose. So continue, continue, continue the path that you're taking to lock in, to follow after God, to pursue Him, to pursue Him, to be part of this body, be part of this family, physical family, spiritual family. Yep, yep. All of it in Jesus' name. Jesus Drink name. it in and give out what Shabbat God has Shabbat in you to give. Because there's sa, there's there, there is that for that you need to give out. Yes. So don't be shy. Yep. yep. Go ahead and move. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now just receive. Receive, receive. Rivers. Yes. Rivers. rivers. And overflow. Rivers. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 So I hear the Lord saying to you, Miss Jan, He said, Tonight's even a more of a sign that you're doing this. For you to come on a night service, I know it takes great faith. And I know, I told you, I said, God's breaking off of you fear. He's breaking off you worry, anxiety, doubt has leaving your life. He's breaking it all off of you. And it's been amazing right now to see you here. You don't know how much joy 
the supply you bring to my heart to see you sitting back there means a lot to me. Yeah. And so receive more. Receive more. Receive more. Break. There you go. Connect stronger. <laughs> I feel revival in here. I do. Look at what God's doing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Well, the Lord would say to you, you've snuck in and out here long enough. It's, it, you, you, your face will be seen more. Not only that, but what you carry will be seen more. There is greatness in you. The Lord would say there's greatness in you in the heart for the church, the heart for His Word. The hunger for the more is in you. And the hunger to see things around you restored to greater levels, even people. For the Lord would say to you this night, connect at a greater level and begin to let the flow come out of you. Jesus. <laughs> there. Healing. <laughs> As you give, you're healed. <laughs> Woo! That is strong. Whoa! 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 Hey! Shabababadadadada! Yay! Mando cobre bay! There it is. That's good, boy. I like it. That's good. <laughs> There's joy for you. <laughs> Woo, like shock waves. Mando siete ando. Mahde se baba. You got yours. That's awesome. So God is God's been working on you and working on you, working on you, working on you. Both feet. Fractured, splintered, and both are healed. So he's restoring your walk. For you will not walk with a limp. God's going to touch you in a way that your previous will not hinder your present, or your future. The Lord's raising you up today and connecting you at a greater level to the body, to the purpose, to the destiny, to the plan. Yes, there's much in you. Yes, there's much to give. With consistency, continuity, consistency, constancy, God said your flow will increase greater levels in Jesus' name. Ah, there you go. Receive. Receive fire. Mando shibabando sata. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this young lady. Thank you for the passion, the hunger, that she's here tonight for the more. She's here for the greater. She's here for the more. She's here for the greater. Lord, never let her forget the moment, just like I had in that room at Scruggs' home that I got filled with the Holy Ghost and touched by the power. Don't ever let her forget the power, the presence that she feels in this house. The, the, what, when you visit her in her room, when you touch her, when, you, when she has these encounters with you, Lord, and she loves you, Lord, let her never forget. Let her have great passion unlocked in her heart at greater levels in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Was you up here for prayer? They moved them over there. Is he's next? All right, I'm going to let him wait. <laughs> well, I'm glad the apprehension is over, or even the concern, or even maybe, Lord, really? Because I understand. I understand the pain of ministry. But pain is an indicator of a greater flow. See, pain is a mechanism that God gave the body to bring alert to a system. If you were on a beach and you didn't feel pain, you stepped on a shell and you began to bleed, the body wouldn't send to what it needed 
unless it had the end. I've never said anything like this in my life. Soon as you start bleeding, your body begins to respond. For both of you, the Lord would say to you today, uh, pain will serve you in this kingdom. It's an indicator of a greater flow. There's more blood that flows, more healing that flows, sensitivity that flows. There's a greater flow coming to your life. I, I feel that. I sense that in the spirit right now for your home, for your family. There is a greater anointing, a greater flow coming to you now. Lift up your hands, both of you. Come over here. Come over here and you pray. Yeah, Mando, get, get, get them by hand. Get them by hand. Get them by hand. Get their hands right here together. There's a greater flow coming to your house. Shambando Sata. Great healing comes to you now. The Lord lifts off of you right now. All ha. Huh, there comes the healing flow. There comes the healing flow. There, see, there's there's different things that come. There's different things that come with that pain. God sends the resource into those places for healing to flow. Let greater, greater flows come to you now in Jesus' mighty name. Greater flow, greater flow. Ah, Shanda de Oso, greater flow. Everything that you have been through is what will bring you to what he has for your next. Don't discount the pain. Pain brings healing, and healing brings a greater flow. It's an indicator in the body can't get mad about pain if you don't feel pain you'll bleed out unless you give attention to it I just seen you on a beach like when I come up to you and I started talking it's like God showed me a beach and you were walking down a beach and you were happy and then you stepped on something and you began to bleed but God said tell them when they began to bleed and they felt the pain of that moment God said, I sent resources from the body. You're connected to a body right now that the resources for healing and the greater flow is here. You can trust us. Now, I know a lot of people don't like to even hear that word. But you, I'm telling you right now, we're, we have some great people in this church. I'm not going to tell you we won't mess up or miss it, but I'm going to tell you one thing. We will stand here with you. We'll support and we'll show love. I guarantee you, Pastor Farrah done told you the truth. We will mess up. You can bet on it. I'm not saying I'll live a lifestyle of sin. I'm not saying that. I'm saying there will be mistakes made. I won't do it on purpose. But I guarantee you, if I make a mistake, I'll stand right in front of you and I'll say, I apologize and I love you and I made a mistake. Or if you make one, we'll say it's okay. Amen. God's healing you. This is a healing room for you. See, all that stuff, so many times we forget the things we become pregnant, pregnant with. The, the losses make us stronger. I don't know if you get that. It really is the truth. Lift up your hands. We love you. We're going to miss you, and we'll see you soon. God said there's a fire got to get in here, down in this belly for him. A passion, a hunger, a desire. Father, I pray now that as he goes back home that he will find in his heart a burning for your word. And he'll begin to get in the word and he'll begin to read and he'll even call his dad and he'll say, Dad, I was reading and the Bible says this, what do you think this means? And he'll begin to look and dig and have passion for greater Lord, let him get in your word so your word will get in him. In Jesus' name, receive. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You thought you was done, and here you are again. That's what I heard, you know, almost the same as your husband. It's like you're back better than ever. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be awesome. Great things for you and your family. Your faith is growing. Your family's growing. Your purpose is growing. And you're at a place just like the last couple. God said, don't worry about it. Just let your pain serve its purpose. 
just, just let it go. Just thank him. Just thank him. I know none of us want to rejoice over it, but when you go through something, it makes you stronger. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for her. We thank you for her role in the body. We thank you that you're connecting her at a greater level, a greater level, that her faith, faith will increase, her destiny will grow, and the greater levels of anointing and purpose and faith flowing in her life. In Jesus' mighty name. Did I hear you guys say prison this morning? Prison? Lift up your hands. Huh? The, the Lord healed your ankle? What was going on? I had a perineal tendonitis for about eight weeks. So her ankle was hurting. She's a nurse. She just gave me like three long words in a row. <laughs> she, gave, she gave me the AMPC of what's going on with her ankle, and I gave you the KJV version. Her ankle was hurting. Your shoulder, is it? Oh! <laughs> so, uh, the Lord would say to you, because the Lord was speaking to me last week when you preached and when you were over there, I seen that flow and I seen the anointing come. And then the Lord said he needs to put that into practice. And I said, Lord, you need to get him out on the range. See, your purpose is a few, you know, you have a season to get out to that thing. God's preparing a way for you. He's making the crooked places straight and bringing the mountains down and bringing the valleys up. And he's getting you out on the plane, just like I said. If I had $250,000 right now, you'd have a church tomorrow. Well, that's how I am. Right? I'd, I'd just go get it, hand you the keys recklessly. But God's got a better plan. He's got a plan that's right. So I agree with what you feel in your spirit for prison ministry. I agree with it. So lift up your hands. You'll be growing and be connected and be used. There you go. Fire. Fire. Greater levels. Greater passion. Greater purpose. God said, I'm honing the gifts. Pastor those people. Love those people. Help those people. Get a heart for those people. And I'm going to give you some people. I'm going to give you some people. Amen. Lord, you want prayer? No, I'm going back there to her. Jordan's always giving her a hard time. Praise the Lord. Hey, you need to get out to revival. 3715 East Lamar Alexander Parkway. We've had healing, miracles, signs, and wonders right here tonight. If you need healed, you need to get in this house. Every person that had a healing, I want you to write out your testimony, and I want you to sign your name to it so we can show and tell other people what God has done. We overcome by what? The blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. Your testimony is already getting better. Just being around folks like us make your life better. See, there's what the body's for. Right there. That moment right there is what the body of Christ is for. To wrap your around, arms around hurting humanity and release real love. That's what it's for. Nothing fake about this moment. No games. No tricks. This is pure Holy Ghost flow. This is what brings healing to the body. This is what the church of Jesus Christ needs. This right here. Thank you, Lord, for that flow. Thank you, Lord, for that flow. Thank you, Lord, for the passion. Thank you, Lord, for the healing. God, heal her heart. Heal her life. Remove from her all the hurt and the pain. 
Lord, let her know that this thing's going to serve your purpose. She's going to come out better, stronger. Lord, she's going to be an amazing person. Things are going to be great. Things are going to be awesome. Things are going to be amazing for her life. And this season's going to come to a close. And before she knows it, like Amos 9.13, things are going to turn around quickly. She's going to be up on her feet, running, going, walking, talking, praising, and shouting in Jesus' name. It's going to come from a flow of joy and peace now. You've got to get this thing in your spirit. You're going to have to let righteousness, peace, and joy flow out of you. Amen. You all right? I'm better than all right, preacher. I ain't just all right. Don't you accuse me of being all right. I'm better than all right. I love the anointing when it's like this. Don't you? Don't you love it when it's like this? We don't have to wait once ever, you know, once a month to have a church service like this. You could come in here next Sunday. You could come in here Wednesday night. You could be on fire Wednesday night. You come in here next Sunday morning, and all the religious crowd that joins us on Sunday morning could get a dose of what we got here tonight. You say, Pastor, you got religious people in your church? It's a church, ain't it? Can't wash religion off. Only the Holy Ghost can fix religion. Amen. Amen. All right. Father, we love you. We love you. We thank you. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise, Lord, and we believe you for the greater. Lord, we thank you for this glimpse of healing. That the body can lay hands on each other. Amen. 